what we had was call centers fluctuate, their volume fluctuates, and some of it is you have the ability to forecast it. You know, it can be you know, seasonal type functionality, tax season, open enrollment season, but there are also fluctuations that are just dependent on market variations and, you know, things that are out of our control. And we will ramp up and down considerably based on some of these market factors and seasonal fluctuations. So one of the keys for us, you know, everyone talks about the SaaS model being fluctuate, you know, able to fluctuate, but a number of providers out there, you buy and you have for three years. So we really wanted to be able to move up and down and scale. So as I said, scaling pressure, we had clients ready to move, we had sites that were ready, we had clients ready, sites ready. We needed to move quickly, we needed to be ready in eight weeks. And one of the tenements for, the tenants for our IT infrastructure, our company, we never want to be the longest pole in the tent. So if you guys are, have been in the call center environment, it's fast paced, it's quick. Our clients want to be up and running. There's usually some kind of business driver. Either they're at the end of a contract or some event is having, they're launching something. Project management in call centers, the goal line doesn't move. So you have task dependencies. It's not like your goal line's going to move. Your goal line's going to stay. And either things fall in or fall out of scope. And that's really how we manage projects. So building an IT solution, CRM solution from scratch, was probably out of out immediately. You know, so was buy one hosted internally, or do we go SaaS? So we talked about it. Could we buy our own? Definitely not. Enterprise tool run it locally, we said it. And here you one of the greatest questions about SaaS is our data. You know, so now our data is out on some database. Is it safe? Is it secure? And I think it's one of the concerns a lot of people have. And it's something we've flushed out in terms of security and compliance. We have to be HIPAA compliance. We have to be SAS 70 compliant, SOX compliant. We have to be PCI compliant. So all those are driven by requirements from our customers. So we need to have those concerns and processes and security in place. IT guys supporting it. Will people adopt it? That was a huge one. I came in and I said, sugar CRM. And there were a number of people who said, sugar CRM. You know, they were just, half of them didn't know what it was, never heard of it. You know, so I had the challenge of saying, hey, we're going to use sugar CRM. And that's the way we're going. You know, a lot of people in the past have just built access databases and used them on a line of business kind of model. I just didn't want that. I didn't want that lack of security and structure in the environment. So we knew SaaS was it. We were going to go SaaS. We talked to Sugar. They allowed us to have a 90-day true up. So every quarter, we can tell them, this business has dropped. This business is added, so every 90 days we go through a reconciliation of our seats. So all of a sudden, that whole dynamic and fear and concern of buying and having three years was gone. You know, so it wasn't it, it wasn't fluid in terms of a daily basis, like a concurrent seat model, but it was fluid enough for us to handle. So open source. One of the reasons we like Sugar was the open source model. You know. We could employ champion challenger type situations. I can go to a variety of vendors and say, you know, price it out for me. It allowed me to possibly, in the future, hire developers myself. So now there's, see my words are powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I could. We don't like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> I got to hire, I got to hire myself. I can outsource it or I can choose partners. You know, so I can keep people, partners like Levimentum in check, you know. Up to now I haven't had to do anything, thankfully, why I'm here speaking in front of you on their behalf and sugars. And, you know, to me, perfect segue to Levimentum. So called Sugar and said, here's my model, we're a startup, we're going to grow like crazy, trust me. Um, 
One of the partners they said, you know, talked to, I, I spoke to about four or five, was a love mentor, reached out to them, had very frank, open, honest conversations about where we were, what we wanted, kind of the past 10 slides in a nutshell. From New York, I speak fast, I speak honestly, usually, I won't say usually, sometimes too honestly. But one of the things I liked was the understanding of where we were, the need for speed, the need for knowledge. The, I would say one of the greatest things from Levamentum was the ability to not host Sugar myself and for their code to be able to sit on the Sugar hosted platform. It was huge for me. So now there's a trust, implicit, inherent trust that Sugar has in Levamentum. So now I say, wow, that's, that's powerful for me. You know, so there is a trust there. They understood multi-programs. They understood that. I will have multiple clients and multiple lines of business within those clients. So I need base functionality that's consistent across everybody. And then I need to customize based on line of business. We weren't there first. That's kind of a funny one. I don't know. What the, uh, <laughs> but uh, I also, to me, was you know, talking to some of their analysts. And one of the things I liked about in speaking to the Randalls when we started to drill down was, and I just said it probably 20 minutes ago, I very rarely had to say anything twice. Almost never had to say anything twice. The analysis function within Levamentum to me was one of their strongest suits. You know, the ability to understand what I need in a conversation, document it back, get it, and then execute and move forward. So, the plan was, like I said, we had two simultaneous programs. I don't know if I'll go into the details of the programs, but the, the things you need in a CRM were there. I needed call tracking. I needed dispositions. I needed CTI. I needed call control through CTI. I needed integration with third-party applications, because normally what happens is a client comes to us with a specific tool set that's theirs. They're their systems, and occasionally, but more often than not, they want integration. They don't want us entering data twice. They don't want us entering member data in their systems and my system for a number of reasons. You, you know, you increase your frequency of errors, you know, it adds to handle time. There's a number of reasons why you don't want a data enter. So we need secure, safe, real-time integration with customer applications. And then last, and not, last but not least, you need reporting. You need analytics, and I can't be the longest pole in the tent. By the time recruiting and training are done, I have to have a system in place on the desks that they can use. I fail, we fail in our job if we are, if people are waiting on us. So we know in terms of telecom, it's probably 30 days, 45 days. It's usually our longest lead point, but recruiting is normally two to three weeks, training is normally four to six weeks. I have to have something up in that six to eight, nine week uh, window. And with that, and I said earlier about the project management, some, some things will fall off. So when I have that end goal and it can't move, project management is the decision of what comes on, what goes off. And if you have a strong base platform function available, which includes the five or six things I just spoke of, people will be okay with it. They'll be able to go live and we'll say, okay, we'll add those other things after we go live. So it allows us to meet or beat the times given to us by operations. So we talked about most of these. We wanted lead modules. We wanted by program. We wanted by line of business within ours. We want integrations to call recording. So for all you no, there's, there's multiple reasons for call recording. You've got compliance, you've got quality, training. It's a must. Every call in our environment has the opportunity to be recorded. Most of the time it's for quality, so it's about 1 in 15. But a lot of times with HIPAA and financial regulations, we're recording them all and saving them. Talked about HIPAA, talked about PCI, talked about SAS and SOX. Got to have encryption in terms of communicating between companies. Manage utilities we're talking about, reporting, and metrics. So basically, we came, we said, you got six weeks. And what we like and what we continue to like is the ability to, for Levement to speak with confidence how they will meet those dates. And we just had a phone call, I think it was Monday, 
And you know, we went through all our concerns and issues. And the last one I said is, this is the timing. And, he's, uh, and Cole says, oh, timing, okay. And I said, I need at least two weeks to test this. So if you can tell me you've got two weeks to build it, and you've got two weeks to test it, I'll be comfortable. I've also gained comfort in the fact that if they say it's two weeks to build, two weeks to test, we'll get there. So deliver the apps, train the people, get adoption of sugar, get them knowing, understanding, trusting the product. And then immediately after, we got more programs because we're growing like crazy. We started with 250 seats. In three months, we were at 500. We are 10 months in, we're at 2,300 seats in terms of call center, not in terms of sugar, because not everybody uses it. So, I said I'm going to breeze through a lot of these. This really talks about some of the stuff we've already talked about. So, the ability to have custom modules to manipulate, you know, I steal from Salesforce, but to me I'm seeing it here. It's, I need to be able to bring up a customer, click with clicks, not coding. You know, so that base product has to be fast, has to be quick. So, pushing data we talked about. Oh, drop downs. It's one of the things we talked about, call flow scripting. So a lot of the times to improve handle time and to reduce training time, we want to build in what we call dependent questioning drop downs. It could be campaign driven. So when you've got sales programs with hundreds of 800 numbers out there, and you want to make the right offer based on the right 800 number, based on where they saw it, where they read it, where they found it on the web, you need to have call flow control through the application. And also, drive the conversation based on logical flow within the application. We talked about call recording. We currently use Varen. For anyone who else who's in there representing recording solutions, we're looking if Aaron's in the house, sorry. Um, automatic recording, nothing depending on the agent. We've got to tie the call with the recording. So when I'm reviewing an agent's interaction with a customer, I have the data, I have the call center data, I have the CRM data, and I have the voice data married together. We can also do reporting. When we pull this all into an analytics pro platform, we'll bring CRM data, we'll bring quality data, we'll bring ACD metrics together to present an overall holistic view to our customers. RC4 encryption. We, we talked about HIPAA, SAS 70, SOX. It's a, it's a requirement. You know, when we are sending, so we have developed implementations and I said to eliminate that duplicate entry, we will enter data within Sugar, and based on coding developed and integration developed using the encryption, we'll send fields, first name, last name, we'll send the Varen ID, so that if ever a problem occurs with our client, that someone calls in and says, you know, this agent misrepresented the facts, they sold me insurance I didn't need, they were rude, whatever the client now has in their system, the call, the agent, and the Vera recording ID. So it eliminates the need for them to have the recordings. We can house them, but they can reference them. So that when they call us, we can pull up the recordings. So we've got a, we keep it forever, basically. I mean, it's a seven year, but you know, with the price of data, great price of data storage, we pretty much keep it forever. Manage your tools and analytics. So some of our clients require us to keep the data for a certain period of time, and then they want it flushed. One of our clients, a healthcare client, wants it all gone after 90 days. So we needed a tool to be able to allow an operations individual to go in, select, and cleanse data. So I know it sounds like something I'm not comfortable with. You never want to be taking data out of the database, but it is something we're required to do. And as long as we've sent it to them and they've got it and they're the book of record, it was a requirement by the client, we had to implement it. 